My name is Paul Coyle. I'm the EMEA Digital Transformation Lead Generation Manager for Cotton Tech. Thank you for joining us for our webinar today on IoT and connecting high value assets. Uh, and I'm delighted to have with me today co presenter Nigel Harley from Software AG. Uh, between us, we will provide a unique perspective on the practical implementation of IoT to maximize return of investment from connecting high value assets. As an IoT expert and thought leader, Nigel Harley will discuss how connecting high value assets to IoT smart sensors delivers ROI and enables efficiency. And I will share a case study overview of how a practical implementation of IoT can help customers to achieve market advantage and will help you to gain a competitive edge. We have a dedicated short Q&A session at the end. Uh, if we don't have any time to respond to questions live, or if you think of questions afterwards, just drop them um, in an email to us and we'll respond to them via email. So you can ask questions anonymously during and after the webinar, and we will respond as quickly as possible. Just as a reminder, this session is being recorded for those of you that opted in to receive a link to the recording and slide deck, and we'll be sending that out approximately mid next week. So let me begin with a brief corporate overview. So Kelton Tech, uh, we're a pioneer of digital transformation. Uh, we have a global footprint uh, present in the USA, UK, Ireland, Singapore, and our head office in India. Our core strengths are people and technology. We've achieved the highest accreditations on ISO and CMMI, and we have a team of well over 1,500 employees globally, founded 2009, and we have many clients in from startups to Fortune 500, and we're a public owned company. We're present in many offices, you can see listed at the bottom there, um, across those geographies we mentioned. So just a quick overview of where we are on the globe and the size of local teams. Uh, we have many guys in the USA and India, smaller team in Europe, and uh, dotted around the globe in Asia as well. So just an introduction on our speakers today. So we have Nigel Harley, He's the IoT COE sales specialist at Software AG, our partners. Nigel's an IoT specialist. He's got expert knowledge of deployed IT, embedded design, and OEM hardware solutions. He's got 30 years experience in the operational technology part of industry, with experience ranging from electronic hardware design, manufacturing, production engineering, semiconductor and IT sales from work experience at IBM, Texas Instruments, Dell, and Software AG. And a little bit about myself. I work as Lead Generation Digital Transformation Manager at Kelton Tech, standing in for my technical colleague, Mahesh Saleria, who unfortunately is uh, not able to join us today. And my colleague, Azif Hussein, will answer any technical questions you have following the end of the, of the webinar. And Nigel will also be with us for the Q&A session too. So Nigel, if you want to share a screen now. So good afternoon. So I'm Nigel Harley, and thanks for the introduction, Paul. So I'm going to go through a um, few slides about the co our company, um, a bit about why an IoT platform from an asset point of view, and the components to building this, um, and then the ease of connection to this platform. So Software AG, we're a 50-year-old software company. Um, we're one of, the um, one of the industry's largest independent integration of Internet of Things, analytics, process software, and a service company. Um, we're in 70% of the world's top 1,000 enterprises, and um, we give the freedom and flexibility to connect and integrate technology from the app to the edge, unlocking the power of data. So what I'm going to talk about today is... Um, if you think about IoT from a data point of view, um, at the enterprise layer, going northbound in the IT space, obviously you have integration where you're integrating data into various applications. Um, but then also as you start to analyze that data, 
um, whether that be historical or streaming live data and taking the rules from that um, and basically moving these insights into future occurrences, you have machine learning. And then come on top of that, um, the outputs of that, the insights, is yes, you need to change and drive processes. And this, this then gets you northbound in terms of application um, and apps and accelerators and actually deriving value from that data. So an IoT platform um, sits on this data lake, but also sits southbound in the operational space. Um, an IoT can be thought of as just another um, pipe of data into the data lake. It could be coming from a connected device, um, seamlessly into a cloud platform, or it could be deployed on an edge platform and where the analytics are done closer to the sensors. But the same principles are the same. You need device connectivity and management and then um, do outcomes on that data in terms of stream analytics and integrating that, whether you're exposing that as an API or and integrating to other applications that are sat on the platform. So I'm going to talk about the uh, from a platform point of view and how we can go northbound and southbound. My, um, from the analyst point of view, Software AG is um, recognized in uh, many key domains in the IoT space, whether it be streaming analytics, device management, hybrid integration or API, and also as a platform. And this year, Machination in Q1 recognized Software AG's IoT platform as a leading vendor in application enablement. We're also, as part of our platform, we're also recognized in some of the leading um, telcos um, and also in terms of platform providers from leading industrial IoT, as well as in the area we're talking today is in terms of um, companies enabling them to become smart equipment makers or high value asset operators, um, which are built on Cumulosity IoT. And there's a couple of case studies that I'll talk about later as we go through. So what do I mean from an IoT end to end? Um, so we're talking endpoints. We're going through some form of gateway, whether that be um, an edge device or a, um, just a, a, a router gateway into, into, a, um, into a cloud application. Um, and that cloud application could actually be deployed in the cloud, could be hybrid, could be on-premise. Um, but more importantly is the back integration. So this is making the enterprise, enterprise applications utilize the data that's coming from IoT. So end to end is from sensor through to the enterprise applications. Um, and as stated as an edge device, then it's data broken and utilizing data from the cloud or from the platform and maximizing the architecture. The biggest thing about IoT is um, deriving value quickly, so time to value. Um, we see three type and um, three phases through that deployment. Um, one of the key phases is connecting and connecting quickly. Um, thinking big in terms of an IoT strategy, um, rather than trying to design um, for, for a complete end-to-end, um, -end, is actually start small, but start connecting quickly. Um, as that phase progresses, so this could be just taking a few parameters um, and analyzing that parameters, adding additional parameters to that if, you, if the analytics um, and the application isn't sufficient. As that grows and for further integration, as you, the value increases as you start to learn about your application, learn about the implementation, and that's where the innovation starts to come, and that's where the leapfrog against com competition comes, because now you've got a longer history in terms of deploying data through through the um, through the complete life cycle of the IoT development. And a couple of examples of that, um, there's some um, um, e-connect e on the top right. Um, this is a deployment they started off by connecting to e-bikes. Um, they were driving revenue from an application. They were exhibiting at a um, um, bike show in Europe and they started from zero to deployment within six weeks. And these, this is a typical application where you're trying to get value and prove value quickly. One of the key things about a platform deployment is um, looking at the total cost of ownership. So with a deployment of 5 million IoT devices, um, Machination have um, done some report to say actually developing a platform in-house versus an off-the-shelf platform, there can be savings of up to 40%. As you reduce that number of devices that you're connecting, the, um, the returns are even in greater. Um, we're seeing typically five-year support required to manage an in-house solution. Um, and then obviously deploying on an enterprise grade, make it fit for production and deployment is key to that cycle. 
what are the three key areas that we're seeing is a, um, a platform that means rapid deployment, um, meaning that's quickly able to get viable minimum products. So that's the fast start. And then also on top of that is an open and independent platform, meaning that you're seamless with the IT OT choices, so independent M, so it easily integrates into your enterprise infrastructure, but also is open and independent to in terms of um, um, connection to a number of different devices and onboarding. And one of the key areas is a secure platform, whether that be secure from a data point of view, but also secure, secure from a distributed um, IoT point of view. And I'll come on to that a bit later, what I mean by that, by a distributed I IoT platform, which we're seeing more and more. So from an, an IoT um, point of view, um, there's five real components in terms of a platform. So when thinking of an asset and connecting to assets, an IoT platform is essentially a, a set of software services allow you to monitor, control, optimize, and manage various IoT endpoints. Thought needs to be considered on where the platform and its data will reside, whether it be the cloud, the edge, on-premise, or on hybrid environments. Device connectivity management are key capabilities in the first layer, which gives you a fast modelless integration. Um, so how do you do connection management? How do you do device inventory? How do you do life cycle management of those devices? Even a broad range of device operations like firmware and software updates and like bulk operations of onboarding and remote access all need to be controlled at that device connectivity layer. Also important capabilities are the OS from a point of view of development. Um, so like three different um, personas. So a business user uh, maybe not have the skills and expertise in doing um, actual program, low level code programming. So having a, the ability to um, onboard and use um, um, use um, business user um, widgets, et cetera, become key. So that means a fast start. So that could be things like device agents and then how to open up north and south bound like REST APIs. Um, and also the ability to meter and um, billing services and also manage edge devices. That's the importance of the device connectivity layer. And then how are you going to connect devices via different networks, whether it be Wi-Fi, mobile, and more importantly, low power WAN. It becomes a vital means of dis in securing industrial field bus connectivity, et cetera. The next layer is data and analytics, similar to the enterprise space. This is more than just about user interfaces, but how are you going to visualize your, um, a device along with its data? But how data will also be analyzed, such as stream analytics, machine learning. Um, this is the business user. So more importantly, how these will be in use from a business user, wizard driven, et cetera, things like smart rules. And then the next thing is integration, how you're going to expose that data. So that's the RESPIs going northbound, but also integration to enterprise applications or even cloud services and big data application. Then on top of that is the application enablement. Um, so for more um, advanced scenarios, you might want to capitalize on insights, running analytics over your device, but also triggering and automating actions. For example, in a predictive maintenance application, you might want to use this analytics layer to detect to predict certain types of machine needs. Um, so for example, you might want to replace a bearing in the future, but you might want to automatically kick off a process to schedule a maintenance window for, for that machine and inform the correct technician and when to replace, order a new part, et cetera. And then the top layer describes something which is important from a time to value, and that's the ability to productionize with pre-configured solution accelerators. Um, so these are predefined templates that give you the, the standard building blocks from terms like predictive maintenance, um, like freight and um, location monitoring, asset monitoring, etc. And then the company um, differentiate themselves with the IP layer that sits above this. So... There's a, um, there's a link to the top right with some YouTube videos, um, and we've we've put together that is, um, we can see that you can connect a device within five minutes. That means onboarding a new device, um, setting up a device agent, expose starting to expose data to a platform. That can be done as a business user within less than five minutes. Within less than ten minutes, you can have smart rules and alerts running. Uh, now you're getting real real time analytics out of the um, the engine, um, and triggering events, and then. It's very simple integrating applications like SMS messaging or microservice geofencing, et cetera. They can be deployed within 10 minutes. And then straight away, you can be building an application that's um, building and deploying data-driven applications on top of these within less than 30 minutes. 
So within less than um, 60 minutes, it's very possible to have a platform up and running and streaming data and starting to get some meaningful outputs from that. Um, and the link to the YouTube videos, you can see that in action and very straightforward. So um, our platform has been deployed um, in a number of areas. So from a pure platform layer, um, we have some references on smart cities where we're bringing in silos of data from traffic monitoring, waste management, lighting. So that's a platform deployment of silos of IoT data. And then also from connected products like sewing machines and production conveyor belts, um, um, industrial um, pressure generators. These are um, basically connecting and trans translating data on a machine into usable data and then layering on top of that analytics to do things like predictive and conditioning monitoring, but also then feeding into um, systems for CRM, for push maintenance for technicians. Um, our sectors are in utilities, in um, manufacturing, logistics, smart transportation, and more and more in the um, um, small um, to medium um, sized companies where basically enabling smart products is, um, is happening more and more. So a platform commoditizes that layer, meaning it's easier to um, implement an IoT solution. One of the um, key, key areas is how to tailor your application in terms of the asset. Uh, we do this in terms of microservices. Uh, we have predefined microservices such as SMS, um, analytics engines, um, user interfaces through a cockpit AI, all built on a core platform. But more importantly, having SDKs available such that customized um, microservices can be built so it could be tailored for, um, tailored for that particular application in terms of um, 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 the asset and utilizing that asset in terms of like firmware updates and machine reporting, um, which is fully tailored for the individual application. The next layer is, um, um, is being able to offer this as a service to your end customers, meaning um, one application could be where you're monitoring in the asset, um, you're pulling down uh, machine data um, that could be used in um, production and R&D that then is used internally to um, bring on the next generation of product. At the same time, um, by using a tenant um, layer so the um, so you have access through um, a tenant into the um, into the platform to see the device and um, by having sub tenants it can be repurposed and white labeled and then offered that to your distribution network for example we have a customer that takes a, um, a steam generator and they pull off data for their own use in terms of monitoring production and productivity in terms of how the machine is performing in the meantime before failure and offering that as a service through a reseller um, screen where they actually that data can be translated into um, when the, the equipment's in use when the first um, maintenance schedule should happen and that can be offered out as a service but so having a multi-tenant platform enables white labeling out of the box and deployed out to the customer base which can be fully configured um, from the master tenant so from a software, um, um, from a platform point of view, um, we're seeing more and more requirements from a platform being, um, being able to be future-proof, meaning that it can scale both into the IT and OT space, um, but also meaning that it can be centrally managed. Um, and we're seeing often this an expression, IoT as a service, where the core IoT products are often utilized across various applications um, and various products within a business. Um, the key thing to um, IoT deployment is a means of rapid and self-service um, deployment without the, re um, the requirements of expansion engineering resources or um, ex um, extended um, skill sets, but also using the, t the tools to upskill internally. Um, we're also seeing a requirement for B2B and B2BX business models. So that means white labeling, multi-level tenancy, but also how to deploy into em embedding into wider IoT infrastructures, things like smart city, where they, um, you can have platform to platform, but also things like open and independent. Um, more and more devices and protocols are, um, are being exposed, which means more and more data is, um, is available, but in silos, how do we bring this across and into without, without um, um, lock-in, vendor lock-in, et cetera. Um, and more and more, more importantly, is methodology and, and design tool tooling. So um, implementation and methodologies for model-based IoT scenario planning or IoT and IT 
portfolio management. These are becoming key into how an IoT strategy is going to be deployed. So I'm going to go through each of the, the layers in a bit more in depth um, to sow some, um, so, so plant some seeds in terms of how an asset can be connected. Um, so in from terms of high value assets, in terms of things thinking about industrial point of view, um, Philbus is a common um, interconnection technology, um, a protocol layer, things whether it be Modbus or CAMBus or um, Profibus. Um, so having different protocols at the edge and being able to connect those through a device layer is very is key. Um, um, our platform incidentally supports over 300 protocols from things like Fieldbus, but also BACnet, KNX, and um, et cetera. But also um, we have agents for connection into um, low power WAN, whether that be Sigfox, narrowband IoT, and LoRAN. Um, we have a partner network uh, with over 100 devices and gateways where jointly a device agent's been um, deployed. For example, the Dell gateways, Robustool, um, Redline, where a device agent's um, been set to expose um, any um, protocol interfaces coming to those devices that can be then be managed at a platform layer. But also going, um, it was also the standard protocols like MQTT or REST, REST API, um, and smart REST payload compression, et cetera. These are protocols that can be another other means of getting data in. So there could be other silos of data that can be communicated through those protocols. And then back in all that of SDKs um, for developers to further write either a device manager, but also um, to use other different environments where data could be pulled in. So then the device management layer is, um, so you have connectivity, now you might need to manage that. And that could be things like um, firmware push, um, it could be fault alarm or triggering on that device, um, remote command execution, taking control of that device. So you need a means that you can actually manage the device seamlessly. And this could be through cloud remote access or um, like headless, um, headless um, VPN, um, and basically managing that from a, from a, um, from a remote, remote connection. Um, more importantly is device, device life cycle. So having a, a set of devices, understanding what the runtime on those devices are, and being able to identify those devices, and also assigning credentials against those devices. So you may have your um, Steam generator, um, you may have two different variants running in the same deployment, but you may have different firmwares running on each of those, and you'd want to build up and, and manage those accordingly. Um, also, as, as devices come available, whether they auto reg, um, register onto the onto your um, chosen network, or whether you'll take those managed from a remote point of view. From a data analytics point of view, um, we offer a, um, streaming and predictive analytics um, on, on the platform, but also deployed as edge analytics, meaning that those analytics, so not all the data needs to be pumped up into the cloud, but can actually be um, activated on locally, um, and then only outcomes sent up. So this gives you a better architecture in terms of data flow. Um, but also you could open up a port and stream up that data if you needed all that data for a specific need into the cloud infrastructure. So now you're looking at full support of distributed architectures. We also offer industrial self-service analytics. So instead of writing code, we have means to deploy graphically and um, stream analytics environments. So pre-built rules that you drop onto your environment. Um, things like self-service analytics for time series data. So you may want to analyze, monitor and predict performance, for example, in a manufacturing process. Um, so looking at the inputs and then you have rules according to that data coming in. Um, then off on top of that, we offer graphic, a graphical interface. So this is where the cockpit comes in and what we call SCADA visualization, the top right with the robot. So now you're seeing um, a graphical representation of that data being deployed from a cockpit view. Um, and then about running batch analysis. So in terms of running um, rich data manipulation across simple and, um, and combining that with queries um, against source data, whether depending on that's, whether it's nested, et cetera, but also using standard tools like to Python R or um, BI business intelligence tools, um, et cetera. These all become important in the data analytics layers. And then from a data management is that how do you manage the assets data? So whether that be proven data models, um, in terms of um, plug and play, in terms of using device, um, native device model mapping, 
Um, so what you might want to do in this um, scenario is have standard um, rules that you push through down into the um, into the tool in, into the um, analytics engine. Um, from an API management point of view, um, secure data access and enforcing um, tr you know trust on the device. So whether that be through the cloud or on premise. Um, and then secure device endpoints. Um, so basically this is in the in, in identity, integrity, and um, managing those devices and knowing that they're connected um, securely. It all can be done through an API gateway. One of the key areas is then um, embracing the asset in terms of um, in the integration layer. So we have a number of um, adapters. That means you're hooking into SAP Oracle Siebel. This is our open. Um, methodology um, and then also how you can manipulate that data graphically mapping it into other formats so converting that data and um, um, when we use a form of pre-built connectors and recipes to do that and then we have full um, API management um, so you, how you can deliver high value uh, data from things like REST and SOAP etc but also an API portal for exposing um, data um, through third-party access, all managed through this platform layer. And then more importantly is sitting on this is um, 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 a means of um, um, writing code applications, whether it be drag and drop from a web designer point of view or templates and workflow apps. Um, for example, like incident management use cases. Um, so it's earlier like how you implement into, for example, Salesforce CRM. So pushing in um, through the workflow area. These are all pre-built in within our platform, but also we offer um, SDKs um, for microservices uh, running on Docker, Kubernetes, etc., which means you can um, basically build high control application development so now we have dynamic processes, things you can do on the fly. Um, so to derive in that using standard tool sets. And I said earlier, to make these um, um, deliver quickly an IoT platform, um, time to value um, with existing applications, we have a number of ex solution accelerators, whether it be from industrial IoT, telematics or tracking. And these are the pre-built so standard sets of rules, um, interfaces and built on device agents, which means we can get up quickly to, um, um, to utilize that. So now I'm going to run through a couple of examples um, and with some live um, screen showing, um, showing what's happening in terms of um, this. So the first one is um, Gardner Denver. Um, they make um, steam gen um, um, industrial high quality equipment um, where they have a broad customer base. Um, their business challenge was um, lacking real time fault detection. Um, and unable to remotely configure equipment, um, which was, um, and also they had costly servicing repairs, um, which was a nature of um, services um, engineers swapping out parts that weren't necessarily faulty, which meant the repair bills were high. So using um, an IoT, um, Software AG's IoT platform, they, were, they built up rapidly within weeks um, and managed to start streaming data into a platform. And from this data, they could look at how the equipment's been used in real life in terms of, in this example, pressure and speed, um, what that meant in terms of loading conditions and looking at things like um, average volume flow of the, the airflow compressors to see whether um, it was running within mean time before failure or whether it was um, 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 parts in the system were failing prematurely. Um, so then they could schedule in um, maintenance when the equipment um, wasn't being fully utilized. Um, Gardner Denver supply a lot of equipment into production lines, so obviously downtime in production line, unplanned van downtime is quite costly to um, um, the end customers. Another application here is um, Dur. Dur make um, paint machines, um, painting robots. Their business need was look at to autonomously manage and qualify efficiency critical operation on their robot and paint stations, both at an individual but also in a group, like imagine a production line. Um, they deployed um, um, a platform in the cloud, but also to the edge and on-premise um, to look at 
um, data that was coming out of their um, historian from the SCADA system, from OPC, um, and also interfacing through Cloud Philbus. They were looking at real-time visualization dashboards from a um, sensor values and analytics, um, and then real-time signals on the paint shop robots every eight milliseconds um, meant they could normally detect score um, in terms of um, quality management and look at anomalies between real time and actually um, and, and that was meant to be predicted by the machines. So they deployed using um, complex event processing and stream analytics and the remote control the paint robots um, air supply and rotation speed so other parameters coming into the production line. As a result they lowered um, manufacturing costs through automating the reduction in errors but also set up real-time remote management from a centralized monitoring system system which gave them remote managed um, sorry which gave them visualized real-time data but also for better and faster decision making the um, as you can see there's a screenshot there for some real-time signals coming off the RAM, RAM paint shop robots um, and what they're doing is looking at the anomalies so they have anomaly score to say actually is it within or is it starting to move against um, and this is all about saving paint in terms of you know, on a production and um, production line in terms of um, looking at the value of um, um, anomalies against um, actuals Another example here is um, Nordex and their wind turbines. Um, so they use an IoT platform as well, as well as an edge deployment. Um, um, so basically their aim is to connect over 5,000 wind turbines. Um, where they have, um, but also connecting that up to their um, deployed graphically. So they've got over um, 1,000 wind farms across, um, across their deployment. Um, and what they're looking is to, um, pull into a central control center, um, a deployment where they can um, look at the critical operation of the wind farm in both farm and, and, and at, at an individual level um, to look at a, num a number of different sensors, but also to um, reduce the amount of data flowing around their um, systems. So, so they're analyzing aggregating data on site, which is independent from a cloud deployment. Um, the wind turbine and farm management is performing the same software architecture that's deployed at the cloud. Yes, I've got a diagram here. So what they've deployed here, as you can see, there's a platform deployment from a central operation on the far right. Um, and then what they've done is deployed in the wind farm, a, a, a thick edge. And on that platform, what they're doing there is then um, managing locally thin edges, which are the individual windmills, uh, which is then connecting into the control system within the wind wind turbine themselves which is the asset so um, the topology here meant then they have got effective flow of data but they're doing analytics at the edge and therefore there's um, the distribution of IOT at the edge um, and then basically by rolling down analytics from the um, from a central operation um, they have the same software deployed at each of the locations which means they have complete connectivity from the operation through the edge through the thin edge right down to the asset um, which means they have control and simple simple um, business user usage. Another application of um, asset control. Now, this is a small um, component within a larger asset. Um, STW deployed a remote monitoring um, in London as part of Transport for London's emissions initiative, uh, where the bus operator has to um, report um, emissions and um, out, um, emissions from its engines um, under the um, re regulatory. So STW deployed a, um, an, um, um, an IoT asset monitoring system, which means they can pull data, um, real-time data, and show real-time emissions from a um, um, from the from the buses while monitoring the device. They're using CAN bus. Um, and they, then basically they have dashboards which they open up the APIs into Transport for London, which means they can pull off real-time data around the city as buses are operating to prove they're within limits. And then finally, I have a, an application here where um, um, search steam generators. 
Um, they started off um, wanting to monitor, and so they could be reactive. So these are these steam generators are in um, in critical environments, like in hospitals, etc. Um, and one of the problems they had was um, um, how they could reduce cost, but also increase customer loyalty from an uptime point of view. They started off small, initially monitoring um, a number of parameters like pressure and temperature, and this has grown to over 60 parameters, um, where, which means they have um, th their system has started off quickly, deployed over a period of time, and now they're adding value to customer base, customer bases, meaning they can adopt and brand um, depending on their deployments with the customer, uh, their end customers. Um, they have online storage and online um, distribution from a business analysis system, but also remote configuration is now viable where they can monitor. So now as a technician goes on board, he knows the machine's in a safe environment, which means he can um, adapt, um, he can um, um, adjust and, and take out maintenance costs because now he's working on a machine in a known environment with limited setup. So the benefits to them is a cost-effective um, service improvement um, they reduced operational saves costs, but more importantly, by starting small, they came to market very quickly with a very fast time to market. Um, I've talked talked a lot about the platform. Um, we have a platform um, in our in a, a cloud, which is a, a which is a um, fully accessible and fully. Uh, um, usable platform in terms of um, being able to build an agile um, IoT platform. It's available to try for free. Um, and um, at that point, I'll hand back to Paul. Thank you, Nigel. Uh, much appreciated. A really good overview of uh, everything that IoT can do in the industrial high asset va uh, value machines. And uh, I will go through a case study of ours uh, as well just to close out on that. So we've entitled it IoT being practically delivered. Um, Kelton Tech, our implementation partners with Software AG since 2003. And uh, we deliver IoT and industrial IoT, so IIoT on the ground. And uh, one of the things that Nigel has just gone through um, in great detail and uh, our own projects uh, just proved that at the moment a lot of people are struggling with getting uh, how to conceptualize IoT projects. Uh, we're very proud that we're delivering them right now on the ground uh, as our software AG and allowing customers to get ahead of the curve, be first to market. Nigel talked about it as well. Uh, so I'll just run, have a quick look through a case study for one of the largest providers of access control in the world. They're present in over 80 countries. And uh, we'll take a little look at how the implementation went there. Uh, as I said, we've partnered with Software AG since 2003 to deliver the smartest solutions to customers, uh, just enabling them to quickly unlock huge return of investment across multiple channels. So the customer's challenge is what we look at first the problem that we solved. So our customer, as I said, provides access control systems and uh, they had very valuable assets to manage. They needed to quick time to market uh, because their in-house guys had already spent 18 months building a platform from scratch, but they weren't able to come up with something meaningful uh, to the demo stage and they were struggling with that considerably. Um, like many businesses out there, um, maybe some of you in attendance today, IoT is relatively new to them, and uh, they had to create a lot of screens themselves from scratch and uh, deliver many interfaces, um, again, from scratch, from, from the very drawing board up to uh, the attempted delivery. So they also had to create an IoT core and all the front end views as well, and had many uh, smart connected devices uh, with edge devices. Um, basically, they were looking to operate with a third party solution, and this had to be integrated for firmware and access rights to digital locks. Um, the audit locks for these locks were coming from mobile apps that needed to be tracked back into the IoT platform. So the data needs to be ingested there and someone had to make sense of it. 
Um, the platform needed to have custom front-end UI development on it, uh, in it, and uh, the platform also needed to support the distribution model of access control devices. So a lot, a lot of challenges there for a team that didn't have the expertise in delivering IoT on the ground. So how did we help? Uh, Kelton Tech came in, uh, did a deep level workshop with this customer, uh, did a technology agnostic study, and uh, discovered that Cumulosity could do 80% of what, what they wanted straight out of the box. Cumulosity is highly customizable um, as well, so it was a good win at the start. Uh, the customer was looking for multi-tenancy and multiple logging capacity, which we delivered. And Microsoft, or sorry, microservices and hosting on Cumulosity was the solution that worked for us. Um, the front end apps were created with Angular JS, and using multi-tenancy uh, enabled boosting of their working services. So we consumed the microservices into Cumulosity and device management and provide a customization in the back end and front end. So the results, the benefits to our customer, um, the great thing was our customer was first to market with this offering. Uh, first mover advantage is key in uh, getting the edge um, on your competitors. And we were delighted to be able to offer that to our customer. They're still thriving with it. Um, they were enabling multiple product lines and also offline systems. And they're using Cumulosity now to create even more offerings. So it's been um, an enabler for them for what they had, what they were trying to maximize in terms of efficiency and also enabling them to get to work on creating new offerings, which of course is the lifeblood of business. So we enable smart servicing of their devices, predictive maintenance, as Nigel talked about in some detail, and also smart analytics. So the customer can now effortlessly take advantage of predictive maintenance for the complete system, um, huge benefit. And this ensures uh, zero downtime and great customer satisfaction as well. And a little bit about the project. Uh, we implemented this solution in record time, just three months. They'd been struggling with it for well over a year, 18 months. Uh, we are in contact, our IoT experts. Cumulosity is extremely easy to work with. Uh, Nigel mentioned that there's free trials available. So if you're considering it at the moment, download it, play with it, and, and let's talk about it. Um, we were able to get these guys up from scratch, as well as, uh, as being highly customizable, as I mentioned before. Software AG are excellent partners. They work closely with us as implementation partners and very proactively as well. So uh, we're, we're about to close off the webinar, but if you have any questions, um, we'll go through those now. Um, as if Hussein will answer for Canton Tech and Nigel will answer for Software AG. If you have questions that are following the webinar, Maybe you're listening to it after the live event and you're just consuming the recording. Uh, by all means, please email, uh, email us at askatkeltontech.com or you can call us on the number shown. I will be sending this webinar recording out next week and you will have the contact details for both Software AG and Kelton Tech in this slide where. I'd like to thank Nigel for participating today and uh, with the excellent presentation. As I said, I'll send the recording out next week. Thank you very much for attending. And I will also uh, a calendar of events that uh, we're doing in the next couple of weeks. Ah, we have a question. So I'll, I'll pass this one to you, Nigel, if you're still there. Yep. So have you seen any interest in connecting lower value assets using LPWA technologies. Absolutely. Um, so we have a we have a plugin, um, and we can we can onboard that. I mean, that's just becoming sensor data. Absolutely. Um, um, one example is in AgriSmart. Um, we see a lot of that where you have a low cost um, sensor technology, and you're aggregating that data. So um, absolutely. Um, it all depends on the what's what you're trying to do with the data at the top end. 
Does that answer your question? Nigel, again, thank you very much for participating today. Uh, everybody who joined, thank you very much for your time. And I will send out the recording to you in the middle of next week. Any thank questions you have in the meantime, feel free to email us on the contact details provided. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Paul. Bye-bye. Thank you, Nigel. Bye.